A common misconception of people when they're studying evolution is the idea that evolution works towards a goal. And then there's uh, this tendency for higher complexity and for, you know, better and better types of organisms. There's so much wrong with that mentality that I can't even begin to dissect that. So whenever I read anybody arguing evolution and they mention those things, I stop arguing altogether because I know I'm talking about someone who doesn't know any science. All right? Evolution does not create complexity on purpose. It's not trying to make things more complex. It's not trying to make things better. Remember that. All right? First of all, there is no better. Better only exists for a certain place in a certain time. If the environment changes, everything changes. So what does good now can be bad later. So who says that you know there is a better? There is no better. Life was not trying to create humans, and this is like a goal. that We, we came from monkeys, and then now we've reached them. No, it's not that. It's, it's, it's kind of like accidental and purposeful at the same time. Accidental in the sense that it's mutations that randomly occur that lead to this, but purposeful in the sense that it's whatever the environment requires at a certain time that is going to become more beneficial. But what that means is that we are not only what is better for the current environment, but also the baggage, the heritage of what was better before. So we are modified versions of the previous version. So in a sense... We, we carry the baggage of what used to be good, but we alter that for what's good right now. That's kind of how evolution works, and so it's not really purposeful. There is no goal. There is no, there's no direction that evolution is trying to get to. It all depends on the fluctuating environment over long periods of time. Now, if complexity happened, it was purely accidental because that led to greater advantage for survival. But not every organism is complex, and many organisms survive without the level of complexity that humans have. But so, in fact, the complexity is the minority of life. Now, all life is complex to some extent, but not all life is as complex as human life is. In fact, the majority of life is not. So, I would not say that life is trying to get more complex. On the contrary, it's just building on what it ever had before. So, humans is just the last step of of, of a mosaic of many, many generations of evolutions uh, where the changes kept accruing over time. And that's why we get to be so complex, because we've uh, our lineage used to be less complex, but we added a little bit over time. Remember in genetics video, we talked about how mutations can add new information while preserving the old information, and that can lead to greater complexity over time. And then you add that to new genes evolving. You'd add that to uh, changes to the existing genes. You add that to changes in developmental genes. You add that to changes in the patterns of gene expression and cell communication. When you put all of that together, variation is an end-up result of the evolutionary process. But there is no goal, all right? There is no best. There is no perfect. It all depends on the environment. So we're not going from monkeys to these computer operating things. I love this little ad. It's like funny. Now, one thing that you do realize is that there seems to be certain trends when you look at the evolutionary record. Look, for example, the trends in the horse, how they tend to get, they seem, it seems as if they got larger, all right? Now, I wanted to say two things about that. Yes, there are definitely is certain trends. For example, in humans, there are some trends, and we'll talk about that in a second. There's definitely some trends in the horse as well. But what I want to point out is that there are trends. When you see those patterns, what you see is only the pattern that survived, but you're not seeing all the other branches that went extinct. It's like life tried the other branches. There was no goal here. All the other branches existed at some point. You have all of these different versions of horses that didn't really make it because they weren't suitable for the environments as the environments change over time. So the only reason that horses have gotten larger over time is because that has continued to be advantageous more and more over time. And so that's a trend that has pervaded. But if that situation were to change, they would evolve towards a different look, right? And you have to remember that there are many branches that you do not see, and the branches that we see are only the ones that survive the fossil record. So there's even more branches out there, missing links, links that we don't even know about, that tell a story of evolution where life actually, different uh, things actually happened, different mutations took place, but only their versions, which were more, advantageous in any particular environment over time became more present. 
and you can see also that the trends that occur match the trends that occur in the environment. So as the horses became uh, more grass-eating animals and less desert animals, they varied to a different look because of the kinds of environments they were living. They had to uh, ruminate more grass, and that means that their stomachs would change, their, their the digestive system would change, their teeth would change, their, their legs would change, so they could be locked in position and stand up the whole time to avoid predators and be ready to run as soon as possible. All of these changes took place because of the kinds of pressures that existed throughout the history of the horses. Likewise, when you look at human evolution, patterns such as increasing cranium size, you know, uh, increasing in, 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 in stature and becoming more erect, uh, all of these different patterns which we'll talk about when we do the origin of life later in the year, all of these patterns existed because these patterns continue to be advantageous throughout the history of humankind. Larger cranium sizes led to better... Um, larger brains which led to more intelligence but only if that didn't sacrifice other things so sometimes life tried really huge cranium size that didn't really make it because too much resource was spending with the brain and not enough with the other structures and therefore it was disadvantageous to be like that especially as the environment uh, called for a specific uh, you know a compromise between brain side and other structures of the body uh, being tall has always been an advantage because it allows us to see further you know same thing with being erect but of course, if you get too tall, it becomes a problem for the childbirth, and, the, and then the pelvic bone has to become wider and wider. But if the pelvic bone becomes wider and wider, it becomes larger and harder and harder to stand tall. So there's a balance between the, those things, and that leads to the height that we have today. So every pattern that you see in the evolution is explained by what's, what's the trend of the environment, of selection in the environment. And remember that we are never going to be perfect. That both in the examples of the horses and the examples of humans and all the other examples that we talked about life, perfection is never the goal and it's only what's better adapted for what currently exists. But because we carry the baggage of our ancestors, in other words, what used to be better adapted, you're going to have a lot of things which are not necessarily the best for right now. Hands are not the best thing to grab things, but because they, we evolve hands from limbs to walk, we are stuck with this. So... Understand, we are definitely not perfect. Life is definitely not making the best thing possible. We dissent with modification. So there's something that we call evolutionary constraint. We can't have the best hands in the world because hands came from things which were not for grasping. And that means that you're going to have suboptimal structures or structures which are not necessarily the best structures to do any one thing. But also, the, the upside of this is that complexity can add over time and that things like eyes don't have to evolve out of nowhere but they built on previous steps and that slowly but surely small changes lead to the formation of the species that you see today as you accrue the changes over long periods of time and as you modify what was previously there so at macroevolution is not going to create specimens like this and it creates specimens always based on previous existing specimens which is cool because that means you don't have to scratch the tire from scratch and it's better at the same time, which means it limits what you can do because you're starting from a previous example or a previous model. So that means there is no perfection in evolution and the perfection is not the goal. The goal is to change uh, what you currently have as much as you can to create uh, the best for the current environment. But as the environment changes, that will continue to change life. And if the environment is changing in a particular way, you will also see a particular pattern uh, in the life forms and that's why you see some trends in evolution not because evolution is trying to create those things but because the selection pressure has remained uh, constant throughout time and led to the advantages towards that over a long period of time all right now what that means is that macroevolution the magic of macroevolution is that small very small changes over long periods of time and repeated isolation events between two different populations will lead to large changes over a long period of time and the formation of different species. And that is what macroevolution is all about. And we'll finish a review of that in the next video, which is the last video of our macroevolution lecture series where we review everything we talked about and compare macroevolution with macroevolution one more time. I'll see you guys then.